So that 7610 you saw just turn on, that's probably the first time that's been turned on in four to five months. That's the reason you haven't seen any videos about that radio lately is I just haven't turned it on. And I know I've missed some pretty good de-expeditions during the summer. I've seen the notifications for them. And I kept thinking, oh, I need to go turn the radio on and uh, work those guys. And it just seems like I'm always so busy doing other stuff that I just don't get around to it. Well, falls hit and the smell of falls in the air. Got some snow up on the peaks. It's time for me to start thinking about ham radio again. Later today, I'm going to go through and test all my antennas. I do this every fall. Go through and figure out what's still working, what I need to work on. So that's my project for later today. But I've had the request uh, to see the antenna farm. So today I'm going to walk you around and show you what I've got up. Maybe some future plans. And most of my antennas are used. I've bought them on the used market or uh, some of them have been given to me or I've traded stuff for them. So most of these antennas are not new and it's taken me a long time to build it up to what it is. But uh, still a lot of time and still a lot of money investment in it. So anyway, let's go walk around, take you for a tour of uh, what I feel is a pretty modest antenna farm. I got 40 acres here. If I had the money, I would go nuts. There would probably be antennas everywhere. But you got to deal with the budget you're dealt with. So let's go for a quick walk around and I'll show you what's up. Get it? What's up? I thought of that. Well, let's start with the short tower here. This is just a little couple chunks of Roan 25. I've got a, I don't even know what that is, a little dual band antenna up on top, the weather stations up there, and of course a TV antenna. And then there's a, uh, I think that's an ADSB for uh, tracking aircraft through Flight Radar 24. Um, that was a free, they sent it to me free as long as I keep it connected to the internet to provide them information. So that's what that little short white one is for. Then the tallest tower here is the Roan 45. It's up, the top of the tower itself is at 110 feet. Then the mast sticks another 12, 15 feet out of the top of it. So the very top antenna is a six meter, five element meat being made by Cushcraft. I don't remember the model number. I want to say it's an A50S5. I don't know. The next one down is a Force 12 C31XR. And it's right about uh, 110 feet there or so. And that's on a rotator up there. Down below here is another C31XR. So there's a stack match in between those two C31s. And so you can put them in phase and use them both at the same time. That bottom one's on a ring rotator. It's a first generation uh, tick ring. And that thing causes me nothing but problems. It, uh, I'll get it working and then it decides that it's not gonna work. So right now I've got it pretty much fixed in the east position. And I just mainly use it for stateside contacts and then I can rotate the upper antenna whenever I need. I keep threatening to go back up and fix that tick ring again this year, but I've already fixed it twice and it's back to not working right again. So I think I'm just going to keep it there, especially for the upcoming uh, sweepstakes contest. That antenna's pointed just about right for that. And then, of course, you'll see the wind generator. It's high. I think Missouri Wind and Power uh, makes that one. They claim it's a 1600 watt generator. Well, if you're in a 90 mile an hour wind, it might produce 1600 watts, but it's probably more like a 400 watt generator. And I don't know if you can see them or not. It's hard to tell on this little screen on the camera. So right above there, there's a um, fan dipole for 40, 80, and 160, which I need to take down. One of the strings that holding it up broke on this end, so it's just kind of hanging there on the bottom string but I don't use that antenna much I use it a little bit on 160 but other than that I don't use it a whole lot and then off the other side again I don't know if this is going to show up or not right over there there's a thin black line coming down that is a 160 meter sloper pointed to the uh, northeast and it works okay, it's nothing grand, but it, it does work. 
And of course up there, there's a little dual band antenna also. Now out here is my least favorite tower. And this guy is a uh, 70 feet of Roan 25, which I keep threatening to take down and put Roan 45 in its place. And the reason I'm not so fond of this tower is if you've got bigger feet, trying to put two feet in one of those rungs is nearly impossible. And it just irritates me trying to stand on that thing. So up there on the very top is a Cushcraft 12 and 17 meter antenna. Can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. I use that antenna quite a bit on 17 meters and probably one of my favorite bands when I'm not uh, doing contesting stuff. Right below it there is an A4S. It, it does a pretty good job. It's um, kind of a backup antenna. I usually during a contest I'll leave it pointed in a direction so I can do a quick switch in directions without rotating the C31 up on top of that other tower. And then you'll see a couple wires coming off. There's some 40 meter slopers and an 80 meter sloper on this tower too. And here is that, I picked that old box up. Uh, phone company was getting rid of some of these uh, boxes and I picked one of them up. Um, I actually got a couple of them. But this one I use, uh, bring all the coax in or the hard line in from the house and then distribute it from, the, from there. So over here is my redneck 40 meter four square. <laughs> You'll notice that there's railroad ties on the ground that I took a chainsaw to and kind of whittled down into a triangle and then slid these pieces of Roan 25 over. And then up here is old fiberglass VHF collinear antennas that I gutted. There's nothing in the middle of them. Just took the guts out of them and ran a piece of copper up through the center. Then up on top, you'll see a spreader bar and two pieces of copper clad steel wire coming down to connect to the tower. It makes the antenna look physically wider. And so you get quite a bit more bandwidth out of it that way. And then I got a little tuning stub up on top so I can adjust it up and down to fine tune it. Then there's about, I'm trying to remember, 40 ground radials per antenna that uh, go out in all different directions here. And that was quite a chore to put those in. I made a little uh, trencher for behind my tractor and put the wire in that way. And they're all, it's kind of hard to see, but all the wires come up to this copper plate uh, with a screw through and then they're soldered on with uh, silver solder. Seems to work really well. It's been up, I've had this, I don't know, four or five years. So far, none of these posts have snapped off yet. This is just from junk I had laying around because I'm a cheapskate. If you're not familiar with a four square, it's uh, kind of four directional. You can, they're phased. There's a, there's a control box right there in the middle that uh, has a phasing box in there. And so these antennas can be phased. So you've got four directions. The way I've got it set up is Northeast, Northwest, Southeast and Southwest, so four different directions provides some gain and some directivity to it. Uh, it actually works fairly well. And I was gonna do the same thing on 80 meters. I just haven't got around to it yet. But you can see the start of it right out there. So here we're coming up to the 80 meter vertical. Same concept, used a 20 foot old uh, fiberglass antenna up on top to finish it up. A little tuning stub on top too, which is an old, uh, I think it's an old low band 40 meg antenna that I cut up into pieces. There you can see that uh, old collinear again, stripped out, just using it for support for those wires going up. Just Roan 25 coming down to a tilt plate on the bottom. You can see the base of it here. Pretty straightforward. And this uh, antenna covers the entire 75 and 80 meter bands. And I've been really happy with its performance so far. Now originally there was going to be another one over there, another one there, and another one right up in there somewhere. But uh, to make a four square, I just, uh, I've got all the parts to do it, I just haven't done it yet. Most of the ground radials are buried. 
So there's a look back at the Rhone 45. You can see the, on the top antenna there's an element missing. A couple years ago a big eagle landed there and snapped that thing off. And then there's the Rhone 25. And I'm thinking of putting another Rhone 45 out right over there, uh, about 200 feet from the other tower, up to about 120 feet. I've got some more antennas I want to put up and uh, I may do that next spring. I was going to start it this fall, but I just <sighs> running out of time. I hope you enjoyed the short tour of the uh, antennas here on the homestead. You know, it's not a world-class station by any means, but we do okay with it. And it's taken me a lot of years to put this together to the point it's at. I'm still hoping to put another tower in over there. That'll probably be my last big tower that 120 footer and it's going to be fixed uh, antennas pointed towards uh, Europe probably about the 30 degree angle kind of cover Europe and uh, the African countries most of them that's probably our hardest area from here is Africa and so if I got a fixed array pointed that way that's what I'm going to probably wind up doing because rotators and tick rings sooner or later you're going to have problems with them and that tick ring up there is a good example. That thing has gave me nothing but headaches. Fortunately, the tail twister and the Yezu rotor that's up here have been pretty bulletproof so far. That uh, tail twister starting to look like it might need a potentiometer before too long. But that's probably a next year project. So anyway, thanks for watching, taking the time to subscribe. Remember, hit that little bell down there It'll give you a notification of when I post a new video. And um, have a great day, and we'll catch you on the next video. I almost forgot. This showed up in the mail, I think, a week or two back. Total surprise. I hadn't even looked at the scores from the November sweepstakes contest because I didn't think we did real well. Uh, my voice had about had it. I had laryngitis right before the contest, and... My voice just really wasn't holding out well for that contest, but sure enough, we got first place for the uh, Northwestern Division. I uh, have no idea how that turned out. I think our normal competitors didn't show up. So anyway, pretty proud of that. Uh, Going to hang it on the wall, so thought I'd share that real quick. That was a really nice surprise in the mail. Mm -hmm.